Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds in the studio. Thank God it's Friday. I got my Cardinal shirt on, and that means it's the halfway point of the season. They face off with the Yankees tonight in St. Louis, and it's definitely do or die. <laughs> well, it's, it is decision time for the, for the Cardinals. Tonight's game will be number 81, and that's the mathematic halfway point of the season. Play 162 games. This is it, 81. So where did the Cardinals stand at the moment? We'll talk about last night's game coming up in our next segment. But the Cardinals, in all honesty, are vastly underachieving. They are 14 games under the 500 mark. They're 33 and 47 on the year. They are nine and a half games out of first place. That's certainly catchable. And the National League Central Division is arguably the poorest in all of baseball. So from that standpoint, yeah, the Cardinals are still very much in the hunt. But there are four teams ahead of them. And those four teams, they have to lose while the Cardinals win. And so far, the Cardinals have not shown, in my opinion, any penchant for long winning streaks. They did in May, but that was May. We're in July now, and the Cardinals did not have a very good month of June. They only won eight games in this month, and that has put them further behind in in terms of getting into any kind of playoff situation. Do they need to make some deals yet? I heard Mr. Mose Locke, who is the president of the organization, not the general manager. GM is the one who usually makes all the comments, but not in this case. The GM is Mr. Gerst, and he kind of stands off in the background. Mose Locke is the one who does all the talking. And he said uh, in the interview that I saw, yeah, we need pitching. Yes, you do. And it's something we talked about last fall. Last fall. And the Cardinals said, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll improve it. Well, they haven't. And things have just really not, not gone very well at all. Now, the decision they have to make is, do they sell some of their top players and prepare for next year, or do they make a challenge for the rest of the year? Halfway point is tonight. All-star break is next week. Now, actually, the week after this. Uh, what, what do you do? Well, that's a decision they have to make, and they have to make one very seriously. Uh, in regards to pitching, uh, a couple days ago, this came across my uh, form, and I thought this was brilliant. Uh, I'm always doing the uh, PR, PR deal after the game, and someone asked him about pulling Geo for that second home run, and he goes, in response to that, yeah, if you'd have told me that second home run was coming, I would have pulled him. You know what the reporter replied with? Well, it's happened three times this year. <laughs> so here's the, what I'm getting at. For a guy that's supposedly going to be all analytics, he seems to play favorites, and that's an issue. And I think that has – there's so many things going wrong with this organization right now, it was hard for me to put this shirt on this morning. All right, let's change the subject. NFL has come down hard on the guys playing with their chocolate chips, and some of them aren't going to get to play a few games this they year. They just can't seem to learn from the Pete Rose situation, can they? And that, that, that that's almost 40 years ago now. Uh, These are two defensive players from the Indianapolis Colts, plus a free agent, also on defense, who are suspended for a year. Now, why are they suspended? Because they have been caught gambling on NFL games. Now, here's the deal, folks. The NFL has some leniency. The sign in in the locker room, there's no way you can miss it, says, we'll do not gamble, do not place any bets on NFL games, not just your team, any NFL games, you can't do it. Now, the leeway is that the players, hey, they have freedom. We live in the United States. They can gamble otherwise if they want on other sports. Heavens, yes, do what you want. You can't do it from the clubhouse or from any of the official buildings that have to do with your organization. You can't do that. And matter of fact, one of the Baltimore Ravens did, and he gets a half a year suspension without pay. But in terms of betting on your sport, no, you can't do it. The sign says you can't do it. These guys went ahead and did it. They're out for a year with no pay. I just don't understand it. I mean, you, you know, you're not. It's not like you're not going to be able to gamble after you're done playing the sport. You've got a what, 10, 15 year window if you're lucky. You're going to get paid buku bucks. Just put a little, start a little side account, and every year you put money in there. When you get out, you can go crazy. Just don't understand it. Just don't understand it. 
Top seeds for Wimbledon tournament starts uh, next week, and it's going to be exciting we'll and really probably hot. Well, in London, it probably will be. They they have a history of rain in July over in London, but of course, the main the main court where they play the championship matches is covered. It does have a, a roof, a retractable roof. Top seeds in the men, Carlos Alcaraz, who is the the wonderkin of men's tennis now. He is seated number one. Novak Djokovic is number two, but Djokovic is the French Open champion. All right, we'll see what happens there. As far as the ladies are concerned, Iga Swantek from Poland, she's the number one player in the world. She gets the number one seed. And Irina Sabalenka gets the second seed. This is great competition. There is an American who is fourth. Fourth in the seedings. And that's the uh, Pugella girl from Buffalo, New York, whose mom and dad own the Buffalo Bills. Thank you. Along with the Buffalo Sabres of the National Hockey League. Do you think there's a little money involved there? I can't probably is. Anyway, be that as it may, I'd like for the USA gal to uh, really do well at Wimbledon, and she might just be a good player. What's the deal with the uh, mafia in Buffalo? They <laughs> mafia everywhere. <laughs> You're an East Coast guy. Come on, give me the 411, Ned. Uh, or he probably don't want to talk either way. So the Cardinals face off with the Yankees in St. Louis. They uh, played yesterday. Please tell me. <laughs> I know, you can't tell me anything good, but... Well, I'm not sure they even played. It was Houston 14, the Cardinals nothing. Now, come on, gang, that that just can't continue. And it was Adam Wainwright who got the start again. He got shelled again. He has been waiting forever to get those two wins to get to the magic 200 mark. And in my opinion, if he were to get them, he would immediately walk away from the team because he is not effective. He knows it. His manager, Ali Marmol, said last night, that uh, we're going to get this worked out. We're going to find a way, and we're going to continue with him till we find that way. Well, that's absurd. You can't do that because that's a sure loss. You're getting pummeled every time out there. Houston scored six runs in the second inning last night, and Adam Wainwright was gone. He just simply doesn't have the velocity anymore. His curveball, while it's good, is breaking right into the strike zone. Batters are waiting on it. They're pummeling him 14 to nothing the final he, Wainwright, gave up six runs and six hits and got out of there. Uh, this just, it, it's not good. 14 games under 500, and you have 81 games for you to play, starting with tonight's game against the New York Yankees. No, oh, it's, uh, it's a tough situation to get through. It is a tough situation to get through, but like I said the last time we talked, I think someone's playing favorites, and like you said, that is ridiculous. This is professional baseball, and it's a business, and winning is what you need to do. Speaking of which, tell me, at least the Springfield Cardinals got to win. Cardinals got to win, and so did the Royals. Let's go. The Royals, now get this. This was a getaway game. Thursday's getaway day. The Cardinals and Astros did not play at the usual time on getaway days, which is the afternoon. The Royals and the Cleveland Guardians did up in Kansas City. They played yesterday, folks, 100 degrees. It was very, very warm. But in the 10th inning, Kansas City scored a couple of runs, came away with a 4-3 victory over Cleveland, and that's despite being out-hit in this game 13-6 by the Guardians. The Royals still got the win. Springfield Cardinals got an 8-3 win over the Arkansas Travelers. That was seven runs in the 8th inning for Springfield to get that win. So the Springbirds are 1-1 one and one now in the second half of the year. That is big. Huge. And really the only bright spot, as I keep repeating, is baseball in the state of Missouri. <laughs> um, so uh, we already talked about the halfway point and what that means for our local Missouri teams in Major League Baseball. Let's talk league-wide. Who are the big dogs right now? Well, the, the, interestingly enough, at the halfway point, you adjudicate your seasons and, and what has happened so far. The Cardinals have to be among the biggest disappointments in baseball. So are the New York Mets. And in some respects, the Yankees, although the Yankees are above 500, but they aren't playing Yankees baseball. That's the problem. San Diego Padres, another major disappointment. These teams really have to get off the snide, so to speak, and, and get to playing. I'm not sure the New York Mets can. They are 16 and a half games out of first place, and their owner has already said, you don't show, uh, show some improvement in the month of July. Wholesale changes. We're going to have a sell-off. And... That will be the circumstance. Now, the Cardinals, they haven't made any decisions yet, but they have to. They are under 500 by 14 games. 
unless things get a whole lot better, they've got to do something and do it quickly. Padres, boy, they're just a big disappointment. They had big bankrolls. Baltimore Orioles, Texas Rangers, Miami Marlins, Cincinnati Reds, Arizona Diamondbacks. These are teams that were also Reds until this year, and now they are pennant contenders. This is great. This is the metamorphosis of baseball, and this is how your good teams, when you build from within, will get a whole lot better. You're absolutely right, and uh, we're seeing a change of the guard here, and there is a lot of disappointment league-wide, so at least we're not alone here in Cardinals Nation. Ned, you have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you on Monday.